So please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, divisible with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for fallen first responders throughout the country. Um, and the funeral for the Great firefighter uh, Craig Saris from Norwalk died of occupational cancer on Tuesday night. So please include, include him in your moment of silence. Thank you. Be seated. Indeed, uh, approval of the special minutes. I have one clarification question. Um, and it's actually for you, Bill. You asked us to take action and emphasize we're not meeting statutory requirements. Is it statutory or industry standard? Oh, okay. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I need a motion and a second. Make a motion. Okay, Ginny's motion. Liam second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, chairman's report. So I am up. First, uh, congratulations on the OSHA feedback. Uh, excellent plan to be proactive and ask for review. I've worked with them before and that always goes well. Uh, I really want to congratulate everyone in the department um, and hopefully the union will help convey that because it does take everyone and thank you for a job well done. Any other commissioners want to make any comments on that one before I move on to my other items? Okay. Joe did. Joe, okay, yes, thank you. Please watch for that because I may not catch it. Yeah. Yes, I just, want to, I just want to make a comment on that. Um, I was involved many years back when we had uh, an OSHA uh, review and it did not go as well as this last one. So that's very good work on behalf of the firefighters in the town that um, uh, took the recommendations that were given back when and stayed with them and and just kept uh, improving on them. So thank thank you very much, you guys. Did good work. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else need? Need to get a chance. I would like to come on the. Yeah. Why don't you comment now on this because it's not on the agenda. So I think that you know it's it's great that you know we you know, the statement that I shared with um, the commission was the one that was repeated to us by. The OSHA investigator or a consultant uh, said that in his 29 years, he never had uh, such a um, well presented, documented um, uh, OSHA uh, compliance review. Uh, that's great. But I think that, you know, what uh, you know, the union president and I and the members and the commission um, you know, are focused on is the much larger picture. And, you know, it's good that the baseline is mm -hmm. we are compliant with OSHA. Um, certainly there are um, at times overwhelming um, concerns about safety, uh, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about, uh, I'm sure, tonight um, and in our future meetings. You know, that is just the start of the discussion. It's good to have that pat on the back. Um, it does represent a lot of hard work by a lot of people uh, to be in that level of compliance, uh, but obviously we have a lot of work to do. Absolutely. Um, so, absolutely. I want to acknowledge that you know that part of it. Okay, good. Um, Sheila, just so you know, because you may not notice, Alex is about to join. He just texted me, so he'll be in there. Um, Based on um, Lieutenant Tuttle's observation last month that the arbitration docket is closed and the commission could discuss their staffing request, um, I went back to Attorney Baldwin to check whether we could now take up the union's proposal. Attorney, Attorney Baldwin confirmed that although the ground rule prohibiting public comment on negotiations has lapsed, 
his original guidance still applies insofar as the commission is not the town's bargaining rec representative, and he indicated that the commission should refrain from entertaining any discussion on the subject at this meeting or any meeting thereafter until further notice. Having noted that, and I ask all the commissioners to respect that, Local 1426 always has a time slot on our monthly agenda, and they may continue to submit material. However, the commission will defer questions and discussions until a future date. So that's that. And um, next, based on the changes in the density of certain town areas and the changing nature of our built, built environment, such as taller buildings, congregate facilities, I think it's time that the commission and the department step back and develop a long term uh, plan. Commissioner Ozaki has been working on this idea for a few months and will offer a resolution when we get to new business for the commission's consideration um, that we will take up. Finally, a reminder that Captain Harry Ackley will be inducted posthumously into the Connecticut State Firefighters Hall of Fame. The induction will be on April 6, 2023 at Aqua Turf. The cost of the dinner is $50 per person. If you plan on attending, please get your checks to Sheila. That's my report and Chief, you're up. Okay, unless there are questions. Anybody have questions on what I, okay. All right. Um... So we are just at the beginning of the formal budget process. I think that the first select one's budget comes out uh, next week or the week after. Um, the hearings begin the beginning of March. Um, our budget has been submitted, so we will. We have not seen uh, the first select one's budget recommendation. She usually she has been, uh, and. Her predecessor and everybody that I work for hold that close. They don't release it to anybody until uh, the recent release it publicly. So, um, you know, we have advocated for uh, a number of issues uh, uh, that we've talked about here and we'll continue to pursue them. Um, we do have, you know, significant increases in various lines that we've requested um, and particular. Uh, training budget uh, uh, and uh, capital equipment. So, um, and and the uh, fire inspector's position. Um, so we continue to pursue them, um, but I guesswork whether uh, or how much uh, that will be included in the budget. Um, I have low expectations for the fire inspector's position given the status of negotiations and arbitration. There will be additional staffing with either proposal. So um, I'm expecting that uh, that uh, may be deferred. Um, we're going to manage expectations of, of the outcome. Uh, we have uh, pursued a or our capital budget, uh, capital non-recurring budget uh, was submitted. The second hearing was uh, the first hearing was the Board of Selectmen. The second hearing was with the Board of Finance that occurred the other night. Um, and in that, and approved by at, at those two levels, uh, new pumper uh, for the for the board. I think it's important to, to, for you to be aware uh, that we have a standing agreement uh, with the Board of Finance or all the boards uh, that we will uh, plan our capital equipment replacement. Uh, so we don't have back to back uh, apparatus um, uh, in any two fiscal years. So there's some breathing room in the budget. So with five pumpers, a ladder truck and a rescue truck, uh, we're able to manipulate the, um, the schedule so that essentially every other year we're going for a piece of uh, capital equipment. Pumper now is nine hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars. So yes. it is a significant. Uh, investment on the part of the town. Um, and uh, so that was approved. Uh, part of that process, and we have worked to make sure that our apparatus maintenance uh, and our uh, fleet management uh, is well thought out. And we put new apparatus at station one and station two, uh, where it gets heavy use for several years. Then, uh, or up to five years, then we move it to station three, four, and five. So the balance of its uh, frontline service is at a 
a relatively slower uh, station and call loading uh, so we get the maximum life when I'm beating up a piece of equipment then after 12 years has no service life uh, left. We want to make sure that it serves as a frontline piece of equipment for 12 years, 12 and a half, 13 years, and then 12 and a half, 13 years as a reserve. So seven or five pumpers um, rotating between the stations for a total of 12 years, and then they get uh, placed in reserve status. That reserve equipment is essentially the same as the frontline piece of equipment, as all the equipment on it uh, is maintained as an active piece of equipment. Uh, it goes into service when a pumper is out for a maintenance or repair. Uh, it goes into service when we have a major emergency and we upstaff um, for, um, for a storm or a similar event. Um, so we get a lot of life and a lot of use out of that investment of close to a million dollars now. Uh, we've got 25 years of life out of you know, a, a fire pumper um, and typically uh, a little bit more than that. Um, the one that uh, is uh, you know, will be replaced in the sequence is a 1999 uh, pumper. So uh, we do get a lot of uh, service life out of it, but it's an expensive um, um, part of our operation. Uh, and what makes it work is uh, the apparatus maintenance division does an extraordinary job uh, to maintain the equipment uh, in partnership with the firefighters that uh, take owner, pride of ownership. Uh, they maintain on a daily basis in the apparatus maintenance division. Uh, you know, does PM preventive maintenance on them and make sure that, uh, you know, everything works every single time. Uh, and that is the expectation that uh, throughout its service life, it uh, has to work just as well as a frontline reserve at, uh, in year 22 that it did in year two. Um, and, and that's the way that we operate. Uh, so we're happy that uh, we were funded for that. Uh, we have a cap, a, a command car. Uh, those get replaced every five years and they have for the last 20 that I've seen uh, looking at the sequence of replacement. Um, and we're upgrading our technology in the car because it really operates as a command post. Um, and it doesn't take much to if you watch the news, uh, you'll notice that, you know, it's important to have good information in the first moments at the scene, regardless of what the emergency is. If you don't have good data and good information about the building, the emergency, the hazard, um, you know, it, you, you don't make good decisions in the first few minutes. Do out in Ohio, if you watched uh, um, the vinyl chloride leak from the train derailment, uh, one of the images shown on the screen is a model of the plume over a map of the city. And that's the type of information that we want to make sure that the shift commanders uh, have available at their fingertips. So when they're dealing with an emergency on I-95, surrounded by residential neighborhoods, that they were able to uh, pull up uh, uh, a document from DOT or uh, uh, Cameo, which is a software program, to be able to do plume modeling, take into account the weather, uh, the wind direction, uh, the temperature, and know where that product might go and make sure that we're evacuating according to that. Similarly, we have the ability to get camera views from um, the school system. So, you know, in this, uh, the way this car will be arranged, we'll be able to get those feeds so that if there is an emergency and we work in partnership with the police department, our command post and information serves them in emergencies that they are the primary responder and serves uh, incidents where we're the primary responder. So at an event at a school where they need to be able to see uh, inside views from the cameras, we'll be able to uh, display that um, on screens um, in the back of this new uh, command car. Um, it really puts command into the name um, uh, with, with good information. We're going from whiteboard and magnets uh, to computer technology. So it really is a quantum leap. Um, and we have a bunch of things. And the other part is we're able to track um, uh, the air pack, we'll be able to track air pack data uh, from a firefighter who's operating inside a building. Uh, so we can manage, you know, it, again, the issue of firefighter safety well beyond the OSHA requirements, uh, but we want to make sure that we have good data that we can protect our, our personnel. 
we have uh, the fourth iteration of uh, station renovation money, uh, which we up from $250,000 to $300,000 to continue that uh, process and advise the commission or the board of finance that we're halfway through that process in, in, in projects that we had envisioned when we started this uh, three years ago. Um, so we continue to work on that. Uh, and that does not include some of the larger station projects that we have in the waterfall, the capital waterfall. Uh, we do have a staff car that was added. It will be paid for out of uh, ARPA money. Um, and uh, this will be the fifth staff vehicle. Uh, and, and again, it's important to recognize we used to get hand me down uh, police cars. Um, and they, after a rugged lifespan at the police department, uh, they would give uh, transfer those vehicles to other departments. Uh, and you'll see white cars traveling around town uh, with town stickers on them. You know, those are all retired police cars. We have a couple of Crown Vicks and a couple of SUVs. We've gotten out of that practice, uh, thankfully. Um, and this will be the fifth vehicle that we have bought uh, in the past four years. Um, so we have two pickup trucks that uh, are currently being upfitted, and this will be uh, the fifth vehicle out of that uh, out of that process. And again, part of the reason for us to buy equipment, you know, and not take hand me downs, is we maintain them over a very long period of time. You know, a car that is assigned to me, um, and several years will will be transferred to somebody else in the department and then as we continue to acquire vehicles or update vehicles they'll get transferred to somebody else and then it'll become a shop vehicle uh, and the uh, mechanics division will keep it in a pool uh, for use you know during storms when people are going to school going to the academy uh, runabouts uh, around town so we get a very very long um, lifespan out of those vehicles. So um, that is uh, kind of, you know, that is uh, what is in the capital budget uh, moving um, into the next phase, which will be the um, RTM. The other thing that I wanted to, to talk about, and I'm not sure if uh, President Tuttle is going to speak about it as well, um, but it's certainly one that um, has uh, dominated our attention as you know, we recognize the NOAA firefighter who uh, died from cancer. Um, uh, there is currently legislation um, uh, that is being heard. A uh, bill has been introduced at the Capitol um, that will provide for workers' compensation for firefighters that are diagnosed with cancer. Um, it's very interesting. Um, there was a cancer bill. There is a cancer bill. It's essentially a wage continuation bill. Uh, it does not solve the issue of protect the employee and his family. Um, if a, a firefighter that has five years on the job and doesn't have a um, have um, vested in a, in a pension, if he gets cancer, he or she gets cancer and can't continue to work, that after two years of wage continuation under the current bill, they're out of luck. Uh, they don't, they can't work, but they're not protected in any way by workers' comp. Um, so we had this arrangement that has been going on since 2015, 2016, uh, and it was small massages to that bill every year, uh, but still wholly inadequate. Um, and this has been a very contentious issue at the state level um, because there are all there are all manners of all types of communities statewide, uh, from big cities to suburban towns like ours, or small cities, uh, to very rural communities that don't have a police department, or don't have a full time town hall, have part time everybody, um, and a volunteer fire department. Um, so there's a big gap in ability to pay and and manage you know, some of these challenges. Um, so this, there is a bill that's been introduced that would you know, create, uh, or the legislation would require everybody to recognize uh, cancer uh, as if you, as a uh, hazard of the job. Um, and what's changed is 
the World Health Organization in a report released in August of 22, uh, reclassified firefighting as a professional, as a, correct me the right language, a professional, a, a, a prof it's current, the, the profession is carcinogenic. That just by working as a firefighter exposes you uh, there, and I, and I think that I heard uh, Firefighter Pereira uh, say today, there's only two professions that are listed that way, chimney sweeps and firefighters. Is there any others? And there's uh, chimney sweeps and firefighters. According to the that, World Health Organization, it's what the same as benzene and tobacco. So, so just being a firefighter is, by this designation, is carcinogenic. Um, so, um, Firefighter Pereira and I met with the first select woman today because of the bill that's in the legislature. Um, and I think that it was uh, very enlightening. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, a very good discussion because Firefighter Pereira has just come back from a national conference uh, as well as uh, her own activism and participation with the state, associate, state firefighters association. Uh, and and pursuing um, and advocating for the legislation. Um, what came of that, um, because there is such, as I described, such a disparity between ability to pay if you're, not to pick on any one town, but if you're Hebron or Norfolk or Sharon, um, or if your town is served by an independent 501c, Three fire department that's not affiliated and supported by the town, um, and they're an employer. Um, they would have to meet the same standard of care responsibility for their employees at the town of Fairfield or Hartford, Connecticut. Um, so, what's missing in this discussion um, is a clear understanding of what the cost is because. Karma has not released that information, and although we've been talking about it for now eight years, uh, seven years, um, and um, although they're opposed to it, uh, or CCM is opposed to it, nobody has released the data, and what's missing is the data. Um, our neighboring states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island uh, have what is considered the, um, the world-class um, legislation that protects firefighters from workplace cancer. Um, so we need to more data to, to determine how do we, the town of Fairfield, address it and how statewide we can res address it because of the impact on many communities and ability to pay. And that's up to the legislature to figure out how to, you know, indemnify, for lack of a better word, or assist communities that might be overwhelmed by uh, the expenses. Um, first select one was uh, very supportive and uh, of the uh, discussion, although not prepared to you know, sign on to it, lacking data. Um, what came out of that meeting is a request for uh, the data and the town will pursue through our workers comp carrier, PMA, um, a request for data and at the same time investigate you know, whether the town, just as we do with heart and hypertension, whether there is a mechanism to provide a level of protection absent legislation at the local level. Um, so uh, I think that, uh, you know, discussions like these are important. Uh, the one that uh, Caitlin, the first select one I had, I think that uh, first select one came away uh, with much more information uh, about it. And I think that uh, um, and immediately following that, um, we engaged with uh, the PMA and the uh, HR department to begin to build the database of information so that we can start to make uh, um, or, or either assist with the state path uh, or uh, pursue at the local level. Uh, but I think that you know you will hear more about it. Um, it is. Um, Not only are we exposed, you think of going to the beach, you've been in Fairfield Beach to the bonfire or a bonfire in your backyard and wood smoke, a slight 
changed in the wind direction, and now you you know for a second you're in the smoke. Well, think of what that does to your hair, your clothes. You know you you can't wear those clothes tomorrow because they stink, and your hair stinks, and you taste it. Um, now consider a firefighter that is working in an environment where you've seen the pictures, just enveloped in dark, dark, black, uh, chemically laden smoke. Um, and all of us who have been in that environment know that, you know, it's coming out of your nostrils two or three days later, um, um, or it used to, if you're wearing your ear pack correctly, maybe it doesn't anymore, but you're, it, it's in your pores. Um, we have turnout gear that has um, PFOS chemicals in a lifetime um, carcinogens in the gear because of the way it's manufactured. Um, we have an exposure there. Um, we hand firefighters uh, wipes to wipe, you know, exposed skin that is the most vulnerable. But where when we started, you just put an air pack on and it protected your lungs, and that was your protection from cancer. And it was generally assumed you wear an air pack, you're not going to get cancer. Now we have learned, and it's not new information. Um, that we're absorbing it, absorbing it through our skin. Well, I don't think that you know, we can rely on handy wipes to, to provide a level of protection for firefighters. We don't have a solution. We can't protect firefighters enough to say that they're immune from the environment in which they work. We have to find a way to protect them if that hurts them. And um, that's what we're going to do. So it's a it's a big task, um, but one that uh, is very important. And you know the best solution is the state of Connecticut addresses it at state level. Um, but just as the heart and hypertension bill got changed at the legislature, and you know there's a not a not a healthy appetite for you know big initiatives like this. Uh, but I think that, you know, if you have a chance to watch the testimony on CTN, uh, it is many members of the Fairfield Fire Department, uh, uh, as well as others from around the state testified in a very compelling testimony. Um, and we'll work uh, through that process. So that completes my report. Thank you. And that was on our agenda. The union may comment to when it gets to their part, but thank you. Uh, Deputy Chief, yeah, well, questions for the Chief. I'm not seeing any hands up there. Okay. And Deputy Chief. So among our uh, operational, um, my operational report, uh, there were a few fires um, this uh, last quarter, or this uh, since our last meeting. On Westport Turnpike, we had a um, fire that started from an ash bucket in the house. Uh, on Naps Highway, we had a fire that started from a bathroom vent fan. And on Eastern Turnpike, we had uh, a cigarette get horse who had a fire in the concession area, uh, started by paper food trays too close to heat source. Uh, another thing uh, we have to mention, I think the chief might have briefed you in an email, but um, we made a miss out. Deputy yeah, Chief, just remember to cast your voice towards I that would, speaking. Yes. Fire boat uh, Marine 228 took on water uh, during that windstorm. Uh, we're still looking at causation. We uh, do believe that it was not uh, man-made. Uh, we have camera footage where we just see the bow, uh, I mean, the stern start to go down very slowly um, a few hours during that storm. So um, we took the boat out and it's in uh, one of the hangars here. So um, um, uh, it's, it's being looked at for causation, and we've uh, sent information to risk management, and we have a police report uh, completed on it. Uh, we mentioned the Con OSHA visit. I think the chief handled um, handled that, right? Yep. Explain that. Um, other projects going on right now. There's uh, still work continuing on regional CAD system for the new ECC move. Um, we believe uh, Westport's coming over uh, March 1st. Uh, we think that you know that may happen. It may not. It, uh, we're not sure. Right ahead. We're not sure if they're ready. <laughs> yeah, we're not sure if uh, things are ready. But um, Fairfield is trying to be ready ourselves. Um, we think a lot of the work is still being done in the development of the behind-the-scenes CAD on the Westport side. Uh, they, they have. They've never used this brand CAD, so they have to run all their information in. And Chief Caliper and I uh, 
took a look at uh, the initial product, we still see there's a lot of work that has to be done on our side. We've given them the information that we believe needs to um, be given, but we have to test it. Uh, see, so um, you know, we're hoping that that works out. Well, we also asked for a, a training version of the CAT so that our dispatchers could receive some training in uh, some more specific things in, in the fire station alerting, uh, which Chief Caliper will also uh, be involved in the training for that. Uh, the radio project um, power was needed. It was found to be needed at one of the three sites, uh, the site that we don't, don't have easy access that we're, um, we're renting uh, on Woodhouse. And um, the, that equipment is being, uh, the electrical equipment is being put in soon. Uh, we believe that they've struggled to order the uh, the uh, server, uh, the heavy equipment at these sites. So hopefully, once they receive that, they'll they will start an installation uh, of the the infrastructure for the um, regional uh, for the radio system. Uh, on Monday, um, two new probationary firefighters will start, and they'll report to the training division here. Uh, during the week, uh, there was uh, in, in the emergency management realm, uh, we had a tabletop exercise, exercise in Stratford uh, with Demis Region 1. The subject was focusing on community recovery to a mass violence event. So there's several members of our department were there, also uh, members of CERT were there. Uh, since Norm is not going to be here tonight, um, CERT also is going to have their initial training course starting um, March 4th. Uh, It'll be held here, and um, so far they have 19 people signed up. You may have seen the BMS signs in yes. the town or the uh, little signs on the sidewalk. Uh, and, and I don't know if you know what CERT is, uh, the, new, the new members. CERT is the, uh, the Community uh, Emergency Response Team. It's a FEMA program where members of the community get training, uh, training so that they know how to act under the ICS system, and they help um, they're volunteers, but they're uh, activated. They are under Title 28, so they get some statutory protection uh, in case they're injured. Uh, so, uh, but they help the police with traffic control during large events. They help us with uh, certain things like uh, running the shelters during an emergency. They'll do the, the actual, you know, uh, nuts and bolts while the health department may be in charge of the uh, the shelter. But they will be the ones doing the intake and helping helping out. They did a lot of work during COVID. They, they did bring food, handling phones. Yes, they, they were you know worth their weight in gold. They're a very vibrant organization um, in Fairfield. They're very active, and um, we you know get a lot of uh, uh, volunteer hours out of them. They're, they're really great people. Um, during uh, COVID, uh, there was a lot of problems with people signing up for VAMS and signing up for all the uh, you know the the shots. So uh, what they did is they. Uh, staff the phones in the uh at the senior center and all the calls were going to all, a bunch of certain people who were, were uh, you know telling them how to do it or just getting their information and then signing them up so uh they're a great team and hopefully uh, you'll get to see them at some point uh, let's see we had the two university thing did we oh yeah you know i didn't put that because if that's that's in the future i put that in the next one unless you want to uh, just that uh uh, we have two major uh, uh, changes at Fairfield University and at uh, Sacred Heart University with the Convocation Center and the Hockey Arena. Um, right now, we're running sporting events, but we expect that that will also include other uh, events uh, having such a big arena space. Uh, we have asked for their emergency plans. We'll conduct a uh, plans review with them next week uh, for both universities and following on that, uh, we will run a table. We've invited them both to participate in a tabletop exercise uh, so that we can test our plans in response to them uh, from the town side as well as vice uh, the, you know, they they test their own plan. Um, and we hope that we'll run two separate tabletop exercises, but encourage both universities to act as observers. Uh, at each other's, uh, so there is uh, uh, some learning from each of that experience. So we'll run two very different events, uh, to simulate two different types of emergencies. So we're testing different parts of the plan. Uh, so that's work to come, but I think that uh, 
uh, the response that we've gotten from the press has been very positive and sharing their information, their emergency plan, reviewing it with us, and then the next step will be testing it. Sorry, why don't you finish your report and I'll ask a question. Oh, so um, lastly, uh, in regards to facilities, our station two bathroom auxiliary uh, auxiliary heating arrives. So they installed it. Um, just have a few more things with the uh, uh, we went uh, individual thermostats uh, to separate um, both rooms that um, the main room and the um, the uh, handicapped access, the uh, ADA bathroom. Um, there's a, a cabinet that was installed, so it. Bathroom really looks nice. It's it's uh, finished. It's immensely improved the um, you know the facility up there. Um, in regards to the apparatus door replacement uh, project, uh, they finally got all the equipment in and they started the, the project today. Station five's first door is uh, is put in and their second door will be put in tomorrow. Uh, I have a picture on on uh, the computer. It looks very nice if you want to see it later. Uh, and that concludes my report. You had a question? Yeah, I don't know if this opens up a bigger one, so that's why I want to like. So, like, State of Art, Fairfield View, they both, like, State of Art's acquired a lot of your property, has developed it. It's it's great. Fairfield View, like, has, I mean, it's awesome. Like, I went to Bath when you there. Um, so, Alex there, a very nice chat with him. I mean, it's awesome. What a great, but like, has that started to, or do you perceive it like kind of sapping up? More resources from like the community, right? Like, like those are different. That's a different structure. It's a different thing than sure. my house, yeah. right? Um, and we're all so. Working. What we do right now, and we through the fire marshal's office, we staff events there um, and at both facilities, uh, as we have in the past. Uh, major events, uh, we'll have fire watch, police department will have security detail. Um, and so we manage with the university staff uh, the events that are occur there with increased staffing. Um, what which we stop, which, which they, they hire. So they uh, pay. So oh, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. they hire. So a good example of you know the far end of that experience is several years ago, or um, you know when it was the um, the 2016 election. Um, uh, candidate Trump appeared at Sacred Heart University, uh, and that was a huge undertaking. It was an all hands on deck kind of event because of it was a hot August afternoon, you know, blistering heat while people are waiting outside. Man post operations uh, uh, to manage uh, the communications for all of the uh, agencies involved. Um, very heavy footprint uh, from the town of Fairfield in that, uh, and those are planned months in advance. Um, but any major event, whether it's you know the fireworks, whether it's a, a women's PGA tournament at Brookline, um, or other events like that, you know we plan with the sponsoring agent, the host agency or uh, facility, uh, well in advance to make sure that uh, we are properly positioned for you know, ex the expectation uh, of the, the service we'll need to provide. Um, you know, sometimes those things don't get planned for uh, well in advance. There was SantaCon uh, turned out to be a much bigger event down the beach and, you know, suck resources out of police and fire for uh, the better part of a day. Um, and we just had a meeting this week with the university about you know, uh, an after action review of that and what happens next uh, to make sure that it doesn't end. So, so we have the right resources available in anticipation of whatever the crowds that has in that case. Okay. Yes, uh, Deputy Chief, you mentioned the surf group. Is that the group that also uh, Parks and Rec is offering a course? Yes, yes. So those people have all. I've always wanted to go, but I am not going to be going to this one. But that most of those people have probably gone to that course. Yes, yeah. they all have. Yeah. 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 Twenty or so active, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's under that uh, is under the fire department. Uh, it, the it may have been announced by Parks and Rec, but that is a division uh, or supervised by the Fairfield Fire Department Office of Emergency Management. Like, 
And they not only take that training while they're in service, they take lots of other training too. I gathered that from what I read too, right? It's a, so it's a great community. So. Very nice. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Um, I have not received anything and I don't see anybody here from Southport. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. I didn't no. recognize you. You're new ones. Yeah, introduce. Please introduce yourself. Yeah. I'm Joe Palmieri. I'm the board of the South Andrew Becker is the proceed. Yes, I do know. Yeah. Okay. Um, report. At this time, we're not gonna. We don't have anything. Okay. We will do this now. Okay. Sounds great. Welcome. Feel out and see what it's my first meeting. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Um and Stratfield. No, okay. Lieutenant Tuttle, that puts you up, 1426? Madam Chairman, if you don't mind, going to the table, because it's very hard. Yes. Pull up a chair if you'd like. Uh, oh, no, I can stand. I'm comfy. Uh, Your back is just so you know, the back is just to the camera. Oh, I won't. I'm talking to you guys. They know what I look like. I'm not that handsome. Um, so, uh, the, the chief had brought up cancer, and that's the first thing I want to pull up. Uh, I know that a lot of times it comes off like I might be talking uh, personally and giving opinions. I assure you that when I give my opinions, you'll know it's my opinion. I'm going to give you facts. 48 other states have presumptive cancer legislation covered by Workman's Comp. Nobody's gone broke. Mississippi can afford it. Connecticut can afford it. Now, CCM comes in with their sky is falling and your taxes are going to go up. If that was true, they've been doing this for six years. If that was true, CCM would show you how much your taxes are going to go up. They'd love to sit there and say, it's a trillion dollars, or yell from the highest bounds, but they don't. They just come in and go, it's expensive. Taxes could go up. So the mayor of First Select and whatever, of Ridgefield, uh, after he was done blaming us for our cancer, because that's what he did, you can watch that on there. He says, we don't wear our gear right, so that's our fault. In all the fires he's been to in Ridgefield, both of them. Um, he he then said, I, I, as he was talking, I just did a little Google math, right? I pulled up there, pulled up their census stuff. There's 25,000 people that live in Ridgefield. Say there's four people in a house, you get to like 6,200 houses. Let's say, and it doesn't, but let's say it was half a million dollars extra into, into uh, disability insurance into your workman's comp insurance, a half a million dollars for a town of 25,000 people, which it's not. But let's say that comes out to $75 a household. That's an accounting error. Their taxes are not going to go up one cent. It's a lie. CCM is lying. If, if I'm not, if they aren't, then at any time I'm willing to talk to Joe DeLong and he can come and tell me that I'm wrong. But he's not telling the truth. And these scare tactics are ridiculous. You'll see in the paper and on the news where they say, well, a cancer claim could cost a million dollars. Yeah, it could. If I get cancer right now, it costs the same whether I'm on Workman's Comp or I'm on Blue Cross Blue Shield. Both are provided by my employer. It's which bucket it comes out of. The difference is, is that I got it at work. I'm going to go into some more facts. I already told you 48 states have it. Firefighting causes cancer. It's not debatable anymore. The, science, the, the, the math is all done. There's no more need for studies. We're all studied out. The World Health Organization says so. That's the entire world knows that this causes cancer, and we're sick of it. You know what? Wait. Just wait. Oh, we got to wait. Well, Craig Sarris can't wait anymore. He's dead. And that's wrong. And his family isn't being treated like it's a line of duty death. The chief was right to call it occupational cancer. But that's not what the state of Connecticut calls it. He's going to fight it out with the city of Norwalk. Oh, we can't afford it. Well, someone called Craig and asked if he could afford it. How come no one was concerned with what he could afford? That medicine's not free. We have co-pays. That hospital visits aren't free. There's all that stuff. He's not working overtime. He's got two little kids to provide for, and they hung him out to dry. And we're sick of it. We're not taking it anymore. I've had enough. There's two sides to this fight now. You're with us or you're against us. Silence is against me. And any politician who doesn't line up behind us to be on our side, or well, you're next then. Then it's time for you to feel some unemployment, you to feel some pain. We're done with it. I, I'm emotional. I'm not going to lie. 
Last week, one of our members is now diagnosed with an occupational cancer. There's no question whether where the cancer came from. His oncologist knows it and was shocked. What do you, what do you mean this isn't work-related? It's work-related everywhere. Uh, not here in Delaware. Now, it's not surprising that Connecticut and Delaware are both places where insurance companies plant their flags. So they come in with their money, and they, and they, and they put their money in to make sure that dead firemen don't get what they're supposed to. We're done with it. That's cancer. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, I'm going to talk about uh, manpower now. Um, in December, we have provided a letter from the town attorney, where he sent and said that discussing manpower here with the with the fire commission would be a violation of mirror and a couple other things in there. When I was confronted with a letter, I brought it to their attention. I said he's wrong. Well, this month he admits he's wrong. And says, ah, you still shouldn't talk about it. He doesn't want you to talk about it. That's political. It has nothing to do with, with anything to do with arbitration or, or any law. It's not. It's a political opinion that he's given. And the fact that he's given it under the, under the auspices of the town attorney is, if not unethical, it's untoward. It's using your position for political gain, and it's, it's not right. We've never once... You can pull up every minute that I've spoken. That's why I wanted to come close so nobody could miss a word. I've never once asked this board to get involved in any of our negotiations. We handle our negotiations. I don't, I don't, it, you're all very nice people. I, I don't need you to handle my negotiations. I've got that covered. This body has supported increasing the fire marshal's office. That's a staffing issue. Fire marshal's office is covered in the collective bargaining agreement, but the town attorney didn't weigh in then. He didn't tell you don't do that. Just this. Now, it's a political move by the town attorney in a political way acting from his position as the town attorney. What I'm asking from this board has nothing to do with arbitration, my contract, or anything else. You have an obligation under the charter. You're responsible for the protection of the firefighters here and the public. I've given you all the evidence. It's not, again, not my opinion that staffing affects firefighter safety or affects public safety. It's written down. Here's who agrees with me. NIOSH, the U.S. Fire Administration, NFPA, OSHA, UL, the Underwriters Laboratories, NIST, the National Institute of Standard and Technologies, the International Association of Fire Chiefs, the International Association of Firefighters, Everybody knows that it's a real thing. We don't meet the minimum consensus standard. Like I said with Craig and now with Phil and his cancer, we can't wait anymore. So pushing things down the road, there's no more studies that need to be done. 1710 has been studied for 20 years. The only thing that happens every time they study is they go, eh, you probably need a couple more guys. This town is growing. We hear it all the time. The same people who are fighting me on manpower are the same ones who go up and say, well, these 830Gs, they're turning the town into a city. What are we going to do? Well, there's only, only a group, there's a small group of us that are going to get hurt because the buildings got too tall. And it's these guys are the people who live in them. That protection needs to come from the town. It shouldn't have to come from the union. Yeah, I'm going to keep fighting for it, but I'm not asking you to do that fighting for me. I don't want you to have it on your heads because this is under your responsibility when someone here gets hurt. I want you to be on the right side of this. And there's only, again, just like cancer, there's only one right side. There is no other opinion other than ours that's, that's valid. You can't find it. You know how I know you can't find it? I'll show you every piece of evidence that the town gave during arbitration of FITUS on it. That evidence is nothing, because there is none. Any questions? Yes, Dan. Yes, Bob Bill. Now, if you call me lieutenant, I get three hours. I'll make it put me on the clock. <laughs> it's on the union side tonight. Bill, it's great. CCM. Yes. Who are they? Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. Our tax, my money, my tax money goes to pay a bunch of lobbyists to lobby against me. It is the you 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 pay into CCM. We all do. We all do. You do. You do. You do. The they town, get paid the by taxes. Is a member of the Connecticut Conference. Which to a whole variety of things, not just this. Yes. 
This is a big part of what they. Okay, do. Next right. question. Who are the two? St who are the states that do not? Forty-eight states Delaware. do something. You said Delaware. Mississippi, and then you no, said Delaware. No, Delaware, Delaware, and Delaware and Connecticut. That's right. Mississippi's better than us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, it's yeah. just you had said both. Yeah. Yeah. No, Mississippi has. Mississippi, they don't have really high property taxes in Mississippi. I checked. Somehow they survived it. Point of order. Yeah. Yes, we all of those, all of those uh, protections are not the same. So there are some states that it's not an app. Guys, we're going over the. We're starting discussion on 1326 okay. and we're on 1710 and we were asked not to do that. But her, her questions are OK, right? She's trying to on his comments. She's asking. Yeah, no, that question was fine. The explanation that was about to come out was well, not. <laughs> not about not about staffing. He was asking about uh, he was mentioning the protections. All of those states have presumption. The, the levels of what comes with it are are different, but right. they all have yeah. they all recognize that if you got cancer, uh, flavor of vanilla, right? right. But it, it is all presumptive. Right. One, two states don't have presumptive, so, including the federal government. Yes. I'm sorry, the federal government has it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just heard the deputy chief use terms and. I'll get them from Dorothea, but uh, when you use letters, I'm new. Oh, I'm games, sorry. Yes. So I'm trying to understand what yep. all these letters are. <laughs> but I, I'll ask later. No issue. Uh, but Mr. Tuck, maybe I'll get you a cheat sheet. CCM, I get it. I, I now understand. Yeah. And okay, thank, thank you for you. the clarification on Delaware and Connecticut. And yes. Gonna ask yeah, because I wouldn't want to disparage Mississippi. We don't try to use uh, acronym free. Uh, uh, yeah, just provide the explanation with it. Thank you. I like the idea of a cheat sheet. Yes. Or a cheat sheet would be great. Yes. Well, we, after each meeting, we'll email you the ones we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That'll build it for new. So it's part of the orientation for new commissioners. Okay, thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? Any other questions? No, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Deputy Chief, I think you're giving the report for search. I I keep it as part of my own. Fine. Process. We didn't have any donations in the packet that I saw yeah, at this time. No, nope, I'm sure. So just so you know, when donations come up, we actually approve them and they're in our packet in beforehand so that we can see what the donation donation is. We did that last month. Yeah. yeah. We have to vote to accept. Yes, yeah. right. that's what we do. Do but we have any standards? May I ask a question? What? Yeah. Uh, is to a citizen can give anything yeah. to the fire department. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of food, too. A lot of food. And food. Equipment. And the, I've the given food equipment. Is equipment is money. So you yeah. name it. Um, we haven't had any live animals show up at the firehouse yet. Yeah. I know it's so much to report. I know it's like 22 years, 23 years. What do we do with the old pumper when it's done? <laughs> It has no value. By the time we're done with it, okay. it gets we we turn over uh, equipment that uh, has reached the end of its service life to purchasing department. Uh, they collect it all from all of the departments, and uh, they have a surplus sale, which uh, essentially excuse the pun, a fire sale. Got it. Thank you. Anybody have old business? Okay. Um, Commissioner Alzaki, are you able to? We're going on to new business. Do you want to make your motion? Um, I'm gonna. I'll read it for you. Yeah, I, I was gonna do an introduction on this a little bit here. Yeah. Um, the uh, three items that are under new business are items that um, I thought was important to bring across um, and make sure they ended up on the agenda. Um, the first one, the resolution regarding uh, a study, uh, is something I started working on probably nine, uh, probably nine, ten months ago. I started putting notes together on it, and I was hopeful that the contract would have been settled, and then we can work off of the contract and go forward. Um, unfortunately, um, I think we just need to come up with a plan. Um, and see what's going on, but not just for the immediate needs, but as I mentioned in here, a plan for the next 25, 30 years. So with that, Dorothy, I'll let you read my thing because I'm running out of air. Um, yep. I've been sick all week too for the people. Um, and normally I would be at the meeting, I think, 
This is probably one yeah, of the first meetings. You should give happen. up your not being here and being on. Um, so Joe is, I'll read the whole motion and he's making it and then I'll need a second. Uh, draft motion, the fire commission based on the growth in the town and the changing nature of structures Fairfield recommends a comprehensive evaluation of fire protection and prevention services in Fairfield, Connecticut. The full scope of the study must include administration, including building and personnel requirements, fire marshal building and personnel requirements, maintenance apparatus equipment building and personnel requirements and system requirements to support all functions, station requirements, building requirements, personnel requirements, location based on current and expected population shifts and growth and changing nature of physical structures throughout the town. An example is expansion of assisted living, increased number of motorized buildings. Also, EMS and fire service, best <laughs> model to serve the community. The current is outsourcing versus creating our own ambulance service, building requirements, personnel requirements, and locations, mutual aid, automatic. Right now, we have certain aid in fire, but whether we, in fact, much like the regional uh dispatch response that there could be more mutual aid that is more routine volunteer roles and utilization of the departments continuation of shared facilities continuation of the maintenance equipment and support of ongoing training recognizing that by fiscal year 24 there will be an increase in the number of firefighters and that the department is planning a study of fire locations we recommend that the chief request immediate funding of the location study and request funding for the comprehensive long range strategic plan in of the fire service for the next 25 30 years second please second thank you okay um i'll open it i have a comment i'll open up to anybody who wants to come okay um, i think the location study is uh i think the staffing is important and we're making the first progress on that uh i think the location study is very important because even if we increase staff we don't change our locations of dispatch we're never going to solve the problem in the northeast section of the town and so we need to think about that and so it's time given the lead time for new stations that we move quickly on that and I believe, Chief, you can confirm we have money in this year's budget for that piece of it. So we have money. Uh, the question whether I'm authorized to spend that money on study, and they have to go back, not for new money, but to uh, redefine the scope of the project to include the study out of existing funds. That's a work in progress. OK. Um, and then the rest of it, I think, speaks for itself that this town has changed dramatically. And Joe, I see a hand up. Thank you. Yes. Um, although I, I, I see, you know, the need for the station study. Um, my fear is that if this is not all done together, it's not going to happen. It's going to be pulled apart and piecemeal. And my concern in, in, in writing the proposal um, was to put it in one study one uh giant look at what needs to be done again otherwise this is just going to be the, the same old same old kick it down the road kick it down the road and that's why i would like to see it all being done together at the same time um joe you have to read did you include in that proposal that you look at the equipment yes make sure the equipment meets yes. like all our buildings that they show up i hope it all but they do that would be up here for me that we were putting you guys for a game. It's in the second to last page of your oh, oh, okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Commissioner, yeah. Just during my lifetime, I, I mean, we've seen the Northeast Corner go from the truck farms to nursing homes. Mm -hmm. It's a sacred part from like commuter college to college, like, like a city of, of its own. Mm -hmm. So, been a huge, there's been a lot of changes across the town, but that area probably has changed the most because it's been fields to all buildings. Yeah, and it's the second in town where we have nothing. 
there's not a fire station up there? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Jack Van Avenue. Gave in a response time. So we can't get the response time. Yeah. Um, Chief, do you want to talk to the big dollars or pieces? Pardon? Oh. Ah, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm back up again, waiting here patiently. Um, again, I just want to uh, say that um, we don't know where we, we have an idea where the population shift is going, and there's only so much land that's out there to build on, but a lot of it is being um, purchased and used for other uh, other uses than what we ever could have thought it would be. You know, I, I've, I've been in this town over 60 years and never did I think I was going to see the changes that I'm seeing now coming through rather quickly. So, um, I, I would just hate to be short sighted and saying, okay, right now we need to move a building up to this area or add a 6 building here and then not realizing that, well, no, that was in the wrong spot again and we really need to be concerned about where we're putting these things. You, you, you're not going to get a second chance at the pie. It's 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 a one shot thing when you start building new buildings with acquisition of land and everything else. It's it, it's hard to take land away from the tax base. That's going to be non taxable. Um, that's going to be a fight. So I I think the plan needs to be very thorough so that when it comes forth, we can just go and look at it and say, hey, look, this is what it is. You know, very similar to what uh, Bill was saying about a, a couple of the things tonight. These these are going to be the facts, and this is what we need to do. And again, I hate to uh, I hate hate to see it done piecemeal. And I'd really like to see the chief go back and see if he can change the scope of his original study to encompass all this. And I'd ask for additional funds if needed. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave you with that because I am running out of voice. Butter. Chief, do you want to talk to them? So, you... um, when in conversations with the chairwoman regarding uh, the position uh, that we have taken regarding uh, station study um, and subsequent uh, studies, that one builds on the other. Um, that you know the information gained from the station study will inform the study that will follow, and if we process through the station study uh, this year and follow up with funding for a more comprehensive or the comprehensive study uh, that will use that data to inform there. We're not going to go out and build a fire station based on, you know, it, it, in the intervening period. You know, so uh, the station study uh, gives us a uh, immediate feedback, you know, in six months, you know, where the stations are because we have projects that are pending um at various locations that i'm unwilling to move forward on uh until we have good data as as, as uh commissioner Saki points out you know you're not going to move it once it's built um and even the stations that uh, are in it's hard to move and i've said this before nobody wants to lose a firehouse and nobody wants to get one in their neighborhood either um so these are very difficult uh decisions so I don't think, uh, 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 you know, to your point, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner Ozaki, um, I don't think that they're in competition. I think that they build are their building blocks, uh, and that you know, once if there is any alternative viewpoint regarding the station study from the subsequent study, that it will come out and be considered. Uh, but I don't think that they're in conflict with each other. I think Commissioner Alzaki, I'll try to be his voice for a minute, is concerned that we won't get the others done and we'll only have a station study. So at le at the very least, since we have this money this year to try to get it, but then go in for the whole thing, yep. not go in in state. So this is how I would propose, you know, for the, the sequencing of it, um, that we go through the process of getting approval to spend the $30,000 for a station location study and complete that work in the next six months. Prior to uh, November of 2023, when the budget has to be submitted uh, for projects in the following year's budget, uh, in this period of time, 
uh, we got uh, for an RFP that includes all the items in the resolution. And now we have an RFP and we have an order of magnitude cost for that study that now is reliable information that I can bring to the, uh, uh, the boards and commissions for their approval. And then uh, we're ready to go in July 1 of 24 uh, to uh, start that, or actually once it's approved, which is really this time next year. So right now the capital budget is being approved. The next step is the RTM. When it's approved in, I don't know, the date is late February, um, it's immediately available. So a year from this date, essentially, if that time frame that I just laid out works, we will be able to start that process. Commissioner Plitzis, any comment? No, I concur with what's been said. I think it needs to be a thorough study that's long, long looking. I think it's right about it, making sure that it's all included all together. So it's not piecemeal because things will get left out. Uh, and obviously the need for the study, as you mentioned earlier, to deal with uh, the staffing issue uh, to ensure that we have the information to render the decision uh, or, or recommendation, rather endorsement, whatever we're going to call it at that point. So I think that is all well and good. No other comment. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner. I just wanted to be clear that, you know, every consultant uh, that I've worked with and the ones that I have interviewed for uh, this process includes uh, a part of their work plan includes a participation from all stakeholders so that means members of the department uh, members of the commission members of the town governing bodies uh the union uh, the union study uh, that's been completed the data uh so it, to exclude any one of them those stakeholders or stakeholder groups invalidates the report uh, so um I'm confident that from my experience in those conversations uh, that everybody will have a voice in this process. It's not a department study or administration study that is done and manipulated and we know the outcome before we, you know, we're paying the bills, so we're telling them this is what we want. Uh, I don't work that way, they don't work that way. Uh, but it is intended to include all stakeholders uh, to get a comprehensive mm -hmm. look and opinions of the way forward. Any other comments? Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Joe. Uh, no nays, so that is passed. Um, Joe, do you wanna talk or postpone the discussion of award ceremonies? I'm gonna try to like run out of air here again. Um, this time I'll be short. Um, we have not had, and the department has not had an award ceremony in a while. There are individual firefighters and officers who are um, entitled to the awards, who have been nominated for awards, who have not been recognized. And I would like to see within the next month or two that we can get something down in a schedule so that we can make sure that um, we can go forward with this. It's a great program. When the guys do good, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, they need to be recognized, but there's the ones that also go above for different circumstances, and that's what these awards were created for. I included the awards that um, can be given, and I think that was in everybody's packet. So I don't really need action today, it was just for a discussion. She, this has been subject to conversation. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the morale in the department, uh, there are two sides to the story. Morale in the department has been affected by the ongoing struggles with negotiations and arbitration. Um, you know, you would think that that would be a great opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments and contributions. But at the same time, it's not the, the best environment to have a party in. Um, it was the intent in talking to the leadership uh, of the nominating committee or the awards committee and the deputy and I uh, to have that as soon as we are on the other side of the arbitration award. So to your timetable, uh, I would agree that uh, if we target April, uh, Bill, that we think that April 1st will be uh, the award will be, I think the deadlines are, yeah, 
Yeah, deadline. So, do you agree, Bill? Do you, I mean, do you, are you an advocate of before that or after that? I'm, I'm trying to read the room and. To be honest, I, I don't, I don't see a difference. I, I don't think that there's, I don't think that there's going to be any change in. You know, arbitration, the end of arbitration is a, a, a reset button. So I think that people should be recognized as soon as possible. And I, I, don't, I don't think that they come May 1st. Uh, you know. Nirvana. <laughs> Congress, if you want to wait for that, my guess is you're going to have to wait until like the next second week of next November. If I wanted to know than that. So, I think held back from giving out awards, or is it just a ceremony? No, we have a ceremony that we conduct uh, to do that. We bring people in. Yeah, uh, so I mean, I, I think like uh, I'm not a union member, so I don't want to know, but I think uh, like a union arbitration and contentious mm -hmm. that should be separate from. Us as a group applauding effort that should oh that should stay clear and distinct from everything else. We're supporters of the fire department. We support the individual fire fighters. We are here to get their back as sure that we can. You know, I'll I'll be doing clear. I'll be clear more here. We can get to, but that's like like I'm not, it's not a party. It's it's a it's a recognition, a public recognition of of us saying like you know. Great job. Thank you. We, we believe in you and thank you. Uh, that would be my job. I'll get a new one too. What do you think of that? Well, I think that the morale is an issue. And having had many people to meet with yourself, morale is low. Uh, first job is to correct morale while I'm giving a trophy to Joey. Morale. I got six people over here with a bad morale. Very careful about that. That's been my experience. And it's a point people that morale is capital M an issue. Mm -hmm. And I would I've always felt so that's my personal opinion. I'm I'm not here long enough to have a firm opinion. I respect whatever Chief would say, certainly, and certainly Mr. Tuttle's opinion would be critical. Um so for me, uh, Brown, I didn't know I came into this picture when I found out about the uh, arbitration. I was taken back quite some, quite a bit. I um, feel morale is critical to be correct. Right. So let me just say that you know, internal discussions about is this the right time? Where okay, let's wait. You know, and this is not a, a chief's decision. Uh, ultimately, it's my decision, but I take a lot of input, and it was felt by the people who were involved in the awards. You know, let's wait. Um, I, 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 I'm certainly uh, happy to move forward. I agree. Um, you know, this is a this is not necessarily a commission's award ceremony. This right. is the department okay. award ceremony, okay. um, and the department is suffering right now, quite honestly, and have been suffering. Um, and the general or, or the informed decision by the people who are closest to it said, let's wait. Uh, but uh -huh. I think that we are close to the point where, you know, okay, let's move forward and let's have them on a regular reoccurring basis. So it's not. That's the big thing is so, so we don't get into this. But well, Lieutenant Tuttle, Tuttle wanted to comment. Uh, yeah, just, uh, and I don't want to step on the, uh, the chief and the nominated committee who obviously have more conversations about this than I have. Um, the only thing I would say is that we've done. Swearing in the Liverpool Sarah yep. and, and we made an effort not to leave other things into there. Um, so I, I don't think an award ceremony would be any different. Okay. Well, that's just my <laughs> again, one vote out of yep. people on the award ceremony do all the work. I, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not trying to mm -hmm. change anybody's mind. It's just from the union side. In my opinion, it should be an evergreen, always growing. If that's separate. Right. You know, yep. like, we don't make it separate. Like then we're all kind of careening towards like we're tying things together that should be tied together. Should yeah, I think and, it's and the bigger question is is when's the timing for morale? Um, yeah. Madam Chair, can I comment when you're ready? The arbitration. But yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to give it to you straight. I find this entire thing to be kind of ridiculous at the moment. 
We employ professional firefighters who are here and put their lives on the line. And I think that people can behave themselves as adults, even if morale is low. If people did things where they saved people's lives, whatever else, they deserve to be awarded for it. And because people are upset with an ongoing situation, I think they can conduct themselves as professionals. I trust the chief's judgment along with the union head who happens to be there and the other officials who are involved in the decision. Um, but I think our men and women in uniform are professional adults. And while I'm sensitive to the fact that the ongoing issue is is uh, aggravating, um, you know, I with this is a paramilitary organization as it is with the police department. Um, and I would expect, you know, good order and discipline from the folks that we pay on the line. And I think that they are capable of conducting themselves unless somebody tells me otherwise. That's my personal opinion. So, let me go back to Memorial Day. You know, Memorial Day is a good example. You know, we have established a routine for Memorial Day and have a big event at the firehouse uh, as part of the parade. Um, an important part of our social calendar for the year. And it was felt at that time, you know, that this is uncomfortable and there's no politicians that come because they're all at town hall. This is not a public event. This is a fire department event. Um, and it was decided that we can't have that because of the ongoing strife and negotiations. Didn't mean that a party didn't happen, but it didn't happen at the firehouse and it wasn't sponsored by the department. Um, so that is kind of the, you know, circumstance that informs whether this is a good time, whether we're ready, you know, those kind of feelings, hey, we're not ready, we're as a as an organization really to come together to celebrate. Um, yes, I agree and wholeheartedly agree that people should be recognized. And we we have recognition that goes back to COVID that needs to be part of the process. Um, but you know, there is a, you know, that 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 inter inside the organization. You know, yes, we get together to swear people in and to congratulate them in their retirement. Um, this should have a different flavor from from those uh, and very celebratory. Um, you know, I, I, I try to read the opinions of the people who are closest to it. Um, that it shouldn't, it should be evergreen. Um, you know, wishing it so doesn't make it that way. Um, but we want it to be as successful so that the people getting the award, there is no dark cloud over that process. We want people who get hired and promoted to have a feel good event without any baggage. And that is my goal is this should be baggage free uh, without any um, undercurrent. So. I'm, I'm happy to proceed with that, but I want you to understand there have been some events that have have contributed to the group decision of whether to go or not go or when to go. Well, and I think we have to honor the fact that you have an award committee and all I would say is maybe you can bring a sense to the committee that we'd like it to yeah, do it right. as soon as they think it's appropriate. Yeah. And the reality is if you're talking about May 1, it's like 12 weeks from now, right? Yeah, we're not that far away. We don't want to force that throw. Yeah, right. take this trophy. Right. Join it. So like right. we, we no. definitely. Well, Bill's a big opponent of everybody gets a trophy, right? So <laughs> everybody a participation trophy. And for a check. So Four. are we close with this one? And yes. we're going to yes. defer to you, but you heard us. I will. I will. Go back to the nominating committee uh, who continues to do work and recognize people. The assistant chiefs have a form as part of the response yeah. form. Is this uh, worthy of recognition? And then write it up. So we have you know, right. we haven't stopped that process, uh, but we have um, a backlog. Pictures of future. firefighters getting awards for heroic things can all be helpful. Yep. In, in, in pictures of the patch will help will help Bill's cause. Yep. Yeah, you know, it's like. So, okay, so done. Um, we've already done workers comp, I think, completely both from the chief's point of view and union. Any need to do that? That was on the agenda for just that purpose, but we got to it early. Uh, well, the reason why I put it on. Well, the I never reached the bottom of the page anyway. Right, so. Joe, you were saying. 
Yes, I was because I was interrupted. Um, the reason why I put it on this agenda uh, purposely because it is a bill that's out going up there. And I think we should have a resolution that says we support this bill and that should be sent to our representatives in Hartford. That we as a commission believe that this is something that's worth fighting for and the firefighters are entitled to. And we should put our name on that. And that's why I put it on the agenda. So are you making a motion? Yes, I will make a motion. You that, have a second. that the commission endorses bill 5857, an act concerning workman's compensation for firefighters cancer. May I suggest that we be careful about the bill number and you use language, Lieutenant Tuttle, about, um, or Bill, I shouldn't do that, um, presumptive. Yeah, if you could just use the, the title of it is uh, an act concerning presumptive disability. Something that's probably that. It's in the it's it's not, it's presumptive it's isn't in the title. That's why I was asking you. An act concerning workman's compensation covers for firefighter cancer. Uh, and what we want to actually say is presumptive. We well, want to submit. No, I think it's the, the, the bill that's up there has that in there. Okay. You know, we, if, if they change the bill like they have to us before, you know, in the middle of the night, we'll come back here and tell you to say we don't support it anymore. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I, I think the point is we want to go on record. That we believe we uh, that uh, cancer is a presumptive uh, workers' compensation. She could say as written, the bill as written. Okay. As, as currently written. As currently written. Will that be okay with you, Joe, as the motion maker? Uh that's fine with me. You can make those changes to the motion. The other thing is those two bills, the Senate bill, sister bill, with it. They, right. They could end up as one bill. It's right. It typically will. Uh, and Liam already um, seconded it. And any commentary from the commissioners? Everybody good? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, Joe, I'm assuming you're in favor. Um, yes, yes, I was muted. I said aye, but you didn't get it. Same. Okay, uh, so nobody's opposed. So that passes. Any public comment? I don't have any. Um, we have no other business, so I could take a motion for adjournment. Thank you. Okay. So motion and made. Uh, it's at eight twenty-two. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. We are adjourned.